Hi, I'm Miss Katie with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom. And I'm Miss Alicia with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom. And today we are here to talk with you about one of our favorite things. Food! food. Raise your hand if you like food. We all like food. Not only do we all like food, but we have to have food to survive. So today we thought it would be fun to learn the story of some of our food. And I think the best way to do that, Miss Alicia, is by reading a... A book. A book. Always a book. We love books. And our book today is called, How Did That Get In My Lunchbox? Sounds pretty cool, It's a good it? one. It's a good one. All right. So show us that you're ready. Crisscross applesauce on your pockets, hands in your lap. And here we go. How did that get in my lunchbox? The story of food. One of the best parts of the day is when you lift the lid of your lunchbox to see what's inside. Your parents have packed it with lots of tasty things to eat. They probably got all the food from a grocery store, but food doesn't grow in stores. So where did it come from before it was in the store. Just how did all this food get into your lunchbox? How do you guys think our food gets in our lunchbox? Does it really come from the store? Hmm. Raise your hand if you think you know where our food comes from. How about you? They got it. Yeah, from the farm. It comes from the farm. So, so today, we're going to learn about all of these different foods and the farms that they come from. How did the bread in your sandwich get in your lunchbox? A farmer planted seeds in spring, and by summer, they'd grown into tall, waving wheat with fat, ripe grains at the tip of every stalk. The farmer cut the wheat with a giant combine harvester and sent it to a flour mill. The miller ground the grains into flour and trucks took the flour to a bakery. The baker mixed the flour with water, sugar, and yeast, kneaded it into a soft, squishy dough, and baked it in a very hot oven. Out came fresh loaves of bread, ready to send to the store. Take a bite of the bread in your sandwich. Mmm, crusty on the outside and soft in the middle. So where did the grain or our bread come from? The farm. the farm. And do you guys remember what specific type of grain is used for our bread? That's right, the wheat. Miss Alicia has a pretty Ooh, cool stock of wheat here. Wow, look at the little wheat heads. This is where the seeds are. This is where we get the grains that then become ground into the flour, which then become your bread. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Oh, and so then here, those are the actual wheat seeds. Yeah, so you see it goes from there to there. And then so we grind that yeah, up and we and turn it into flour, flour. And then we can use that to make the breads for our sandwich. All right, what's next? How did the cheese in your sandwich get in your lunchbox? Your cheese was once milk that came from a cow. A farmer milked the cows, and a tanker from the dairy came to collect the milk. In the dairy, cheesemakers warmed up the milk and added bacteria to make it turn sour and thick. Then they added a substance that animals use to digest milk called rennet, and it changed again into bits called curds floating in whey. They drained off the whey chopped up the rubbery curds, added some salt, and pressed them into blocks. They stored the blocks for months until the cheese was ripe. Bite into your cheese 
It's creamy and smooth, but tasty too, and tingly on your tongue. Okay, what did we add to our sandwich? Cheese! And where does cheese come from? Well, kind of comes <laughs> from cows. But first we have to get that milk from the cows, which we then make into the cheese. So what type of cows do we get our milk from? What do they look like? What colors are they? That's right. Yeah. A lot of the ones we see are black and white. We call them dairy cows. Yeah. But this breed specifically is called a what? Holstein. A Holstein. Can you guys say that? Holstein. Holstein. And Holstein dairy cows are very popular here in Arizona, and that's because they tolerate the heat really well. And you know that it's very hot here. Okay. What else do we know about our dairy cow? Let's give them some more information. Okay. I love dairy cows. So what about our Holstein? So usually they're black and white. Can they also be different colors though? They can. They can? They can Maybe. kind of be brown and yeah. white, depending what they're crossed with. And they are one of the bigger dairy cows, so they weigh over a thousand pounds. A thousand yeah. pounds. And these ones, the reason we, another reason we use them, they produce a lot of milk. They're very, very good at making milk. It's almost 10 gallons yeah. of milk a day each of these ladies 10 produce. 10 gallons, like a big gallon of milk a day, each That's cow. That's a lot That's of a lot. milk. And one of the things that I really like about our Holstein dairy cows is that no two cow has exactly the same spots. How yeah, is that it's possible? Like a, it's like a fingerprint, so you can identify them. Our, Everybody every... look at your, your fingers. Maybe your thumbs or maybe your fingers. Get them real close. Do you see? Not that close. You can't see. <laughs> Woo! Those little lines that are on the pads of your fingers, your fingertips, okay? Those are called your fingerprints. And not one other person in your classroom or in this world has exactly the same fingerprints as you. And that's the same for our Holstein dairy cows. Yep. Now, can we have other types of cows on our dairy? Yes, we can. Ooh. We can have the brown cows. These ones are my favorite. Is that because they make chocolate milk? <sighs> no. Cows make milk, and we have to add chocolate and other flavorings to make them that way. So all cows give regular milk. But these Jersey cows, ah, what did I say, Jersey? Can you say Jersey? Jersey. Jersey. These Jersey cows do produce a special milk. And what's so special about their milk if it's not chocolate? Well, their milk has extra fat in it. It's creamier. Ooh, so that means it's really good to make things like cheese and mm -hmm. butter and ice, ice cream, cream, right? Those <laughs> sorts of things. So those are our Jersey cows. They're a little bit smaller than our Holstein cows. They're not going to get quite as big but they do produce that pretty special milk so and they like do those. well in the heat so they do well here in arizona yeah okay so now we have bread for our sandwich we have cheese for our sandwich let's see what's next how did your tomatoes get in your lunchbox last summer your tomatoes were growing in a big plastic tunnel full of tomato plants the sun and the warmth made the plants grow tall and bloom with yellow flowers. As each flower died, a teeny green tomato fruit began to grow from its middle. Day by day, the plants sucked up water and the tomatoes swelled from green to orange to red. When bunches of ripe scarlet tomatoes dangled from the branches, the grower picked them, sorted them, packed them, and sent them to the store. Pop one in your mouth and squish the sweet, sour juice out. Tomatoes! Raise your hand if you like to eat tomatoes. Wow, a like lot this? of them. You eat it just like an apple, don't you? <laughs> That's a big Put a tomato. little salt on there. Hmm. I like my tomatoes when they're like ketchup. That's how I like my tomatoes. Tomato sauce. Yeah, tomato sauce, sauce for my pasta. But tomatoes, where do tomatoes come from? Well, wow. the farm. Yeah. And in our story, we've learned that they can come from a farm that's inside. Do you guys remember what the building was called around the tomatoes? Where did we grow the tomatoes in? 
It looked like a house. It was called a greenhouse. greenhouse. Very good. So that is how we grow tomatoes here in Arizona as well. Ooh, like and so here's a pretty good picture of it. Now you might see some red tomatoes and some green tomatoes, yeah. slightly different colors. And that's just because those green tomatoes aren't quite ripe yet. But when they turn red and they're ripe for the picking, we'll put them on our sandwich. Yeah. So we can use greenhouses in Arizona to help us grow tomatoes in different times of the year. So that way the, we can control the environment, we can control the temperature just like your house. Right, right. In if it's in the summer in Arizona, we turn on the air conditioning, right? So they can keep the tomatoes a little bit cooler, and in the winter they can keep them a little bit warmer, so they can grow them mostly year round. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it also keeps out pests like insects and animals and things that might get into the greenhouse and try to eat the tomatoes. Because if you grow tomatoes in a garden outside, you'll see sometimes that animals mm. and other things will get to them and eat them. We like tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I love tomatoes. Okay, let's see what's next. How did your apple juice get in your lunchbox? Last spring, the apple trees in the orchard were full of flowers. In summer, teeny apple buds grew from each flower stalk. The buds kept growing, and by autumn, the trees were full of ripe, sweet fruit. Pickers climbed the trees and filled their bins with fruit. A truck took the bin to the juice factory, where sorters threw out any rotten apples. Then a machine washed the rest and mashed them in a milling machine, seeds, skin, and all. A huge press squeezed the mash till all its juice ran out. A heater warmed up the juice to kill off any germs and poured it into cartons. Suck hard on your straw to taste that apple tang. How many of you like apple juice? Now, I know that you already knew that apple juice comes from apples. <laughs> Can you guys tell us where apples grow? Of course, they grow on trees. on trees. And what color apples can we get? Ooh, there's lots oh. of different types and colors of apples. There are hundreds of different Red, varieties. Yellow, green, pink, combination, like a uh, combination. Yeah. What's your favorite type of apple? Mine happens to be Honeycrisp. Mm. They're very sweet. I, I like, like them. Granny Smith because they're kind of sour. Okay, yeah. So we all like different types of apples, right? The one thing that's important to remember about apples and apple trees is that for the most part, only one type of apple grows on a tree. So you're not gonna find a tree that has yellow, green, and red apples. We're gonna have a red apple tree or green apple tree or yellow apple tree. Pretty cool, okay. Oh, this is making me hungry. Let's find out what else is in our lunchbox. How did your carrots get in your lunchbox? Last spring, your carrots were growing in a field on a vegetable farm. You wouldn't have seen any carrots then, just long rows of feathery leaves. As the leaves grew taller in the summer sun, each carrot root pushed deeper into the earth soaking up water and turning orange. By late summer, they had swelled so much that the top of each carrot poked out of the earth. Pickers pulled them up. Then the carrots were washed and packed into trucks. Bite into your carrot. See just how sweet and crunchy it tastes. Carrots! Ooh. How many of you how many of you guys like carrots? Do you like the big carrots or the baby carrots? Ooh, I like big carrots like this. Did you know that big carrots and baby carrots are actually the same thing? Mm-hmm. The baby carrots are made by taking the big carrots, shaving them down just a little bit so that they're a little bit thinner and cutting them into the little nuggets that you buy at the store. So believe it or not, you're not gonna go to a farm 
and find little baby carrots down in the soil. You're going to find yeah. the big carrots. And our farmers actually work really, really hard when they grow these carrots to grow carrots that are all of uniform size, meaning that every carrot that they pull from the ground is going to come up uh, roughly the same length and roughly the same diameter or around, same size around. And that way, once they're cleaned and they go through the cutting machine, those little baby carrots are, are, are all pretty similar in size. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And do we have a farm here in Arizona that grows carrots? We do. We do. We actually have a couple yeah. of them. But one of the really big farms is Russo Farming Company. They grow them right here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Pretty special. Okay. What else is in our lunchbox? Let's find out. How did the chocolate chip in your cookie get into your lunchbox? Cookies are made from flour, sugar, and butter. And this one's got chocolate chips in it. Chocolate starts off as a bean. Well, lots of beans, which grow in pods on a coca tree. The pods are picked from the tree. Then they're cut open and the beans are scooped out. These beans are spread out and left to dry in the sun. The dried beans are taken to a factory, sometimes on the other side of the world. In the factory, they're cleaned, roasted, and ground into a thick, sticky paste. Sugar's mixed in, so the paste gets sweeter, but it's still gritty, so it's squeezed, stirred, melted, and cooled. To make it really smooth, it takes a lot of work to make chocolate. Finally, the chocolate is molded into blocks. These are made into little chips that will melt in your mouth all over again. Oh, we saved one of the better things for last. And of course, that is a chocolate chip cookie. Ooh. Happens to be one of my favorite things. I love chocolate chip cookies. Love chocolate chip cookies. In fact, we love chocolate chip cookies so much, I already ate it. So I don't have one to show you. But we do have something pretty special to show you. What's that? Oh, these are the cacao beans. Ooh. Did you know this is where chocolate starts just like in the story That's right? right we learned about that in the story how many of you have seen those in real life before raise your hand not many of us yeah. huh did you think that's, that's where chocolate cool. came from comes from a bean it actually looks pretty similar to like a, a walnut or yeah. something it's like an almond shape of an almond oh yeah i meant an almond yeah. not a walnut <laughs> silly me very cool. But if I ate that right now, would that taste like a Hershey bar? I don't think so. No. Has to go through all the steps yeah. in the story to give it its sweetness. And do we grow those here in Arizona? No. Mm -mm. I wish we did. Unfortunately, don't. I wish we did. All right, let's find out what we have left in our lunchbox. How did your clementine get in your lunchbox? Early in summer, the trees in the clementine grove were full of sweet-smelling, waxy flowers. As the flowers died, a teeny green clementine berry began to grow out of each one. The clementine swelled in the warm sun, turning from green to yellow. By the time cooler winter weather arrived, the clementines had turned orange and were so heavy and full of juice that they made the branches droop. Pickers climbed ladders to reach them. They had to wear gloves so they didn't bruise the tender fruit inside the skin. They washed them and packed them, and the grower sent the boxes and trucks to the market. It's easy to peel a clementine. Then all you have to do is pop the juicy pieces in your mouth and bite. Most clementines are seedless. All right, we saved one of the very special woo, <laughs> things for last. And in our story, we learned about a clementine. This right here is actually a big orange. So it's just a different variety of orange, a little bit bigger. But the cool thing about this is another name for an orange or this type of fruit is called 
citrus. Yep. And you might have heard about citrus before because of Arizona's five, five C's. C's. That's right. So citrus, very, very important. Now, oranges are awesome because certain varieties you can peel mm -hmm. and just pop them in your mouth. What else can we do with oranges? Uh, we can make orange juice. We can squeeze them and we can make some orange juice. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right, let's get back to our story. You've eaten it all, from the first bite of bread to the last piece of fruit. It came from fields and farms, from orchards, from groves, and from dairies. So many people helped bring it to you. Farmers and bakers, cheese and chocolate makers, pickers, packers, and truck drivers. And now it's all in your stomach, starting to do the job that food does helping you grow taller and stronger, and giving you get up and go. All right. How many of you guys like that story? I, I always love learning about where my food comes from. But now I think we should actually go through, I don't know, Miss Alicia's lunch oh, and good. see what she brought. I'm so hungry. And see if we can figure out yeah. where these things came from. Let's see what's we know inside my lunch. She got them from the grocery store, but where did the grocery store get these things? Ooh, okay. So first, I have salad. A, salad. a chicken BLT salad. Ooh, chicken BLT. Ooh. Okay, so let's help out. So we know it's got chicken. Mm -hmm. We know it has lettuce. But what does BLT stand for? Well, B. Bacon. bacon. L is the lettuce. lettuce. And T is tomato. tomato. Look at those little tomatoes. So we learned that tomatoes, they come from a farm, right? Really farms that grow inside. So we called those greenhouses. And then we have lettuce. Do we grow lettuce here in Arizona? Uh, we grow a lot of lettuce. In especially fact. Especially in the winter. Yeah. In fact, Arizona is the winter lettuce capital of the world. November through February, Yuma, Arizona specifically, grows 90% of the nation's leafy greens. That's all those lot. amazing lettuces. Maricopa County is another big producer of lettuce as well. All right. So let's talk though a little bit just about that bacon and oh, where yeah. bacon comes from, because that's tricky. Do you guys know where bacon comes from? That's right. Pigs. Comes from the pigs. These guys are super smart. <laughs> I like it. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, so I've got a pickle. Pickles. Ooh, I love this pickles. This one's tricky. How are there pickle farms? Yeah. No. <laughs> kind of though. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Where do we get pickles from, Miss Alicia? Pickles are made from cucumbers. Did you guys know that? That pickles come from cucumbers? How many of you guys like cucumbers? How many of you guys like pickles? Some of you guys don't like yeah. one or the other, huh? The pickling process yeah. is very important for me when it comes to And you can pickle lots cucumbers. of things, too. It's just putting it in a container with usually vinegar and salt, and it changes the flavor, right? And it makes them taste a little bit different. Pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, I I'm excited. Pickles. What else do you have in there? Ooh. <gasps> I've got, can you guys see? These are cherries. Who likes cherries? Mm -hmm. Where does where do cherries come from? Do they come from the ground? Do they come from a bush? Do they come from a tree? Where do cherries come from? Cherry trees. Very good. Okay. Cherries come yeah. from trees. How many of you guys like cherries? They're good. I love most things that are flavored like cherries, right? Mm -hmm. Cherry ices, cherry candy, cherry, cherry, cherry. Love cherry. Okay. And then the last got? thing that's in here is kind of my little trunk. Oh, oh crunchy Ooh. corn, corn nuts. nuts. Where do corn, corn nuts come from? Some of you might not from? have had these before, so I'm going to open it so you can see. Corn nuts. Where do they come from? They look like little corn kernels. And that's because they come see. from corn. Pretty cool. They're very crunchy too. Yeah. Oh, I love corn nuts. If you haven't had corn nuts, you should try some corn nuts. Well, Miss Alicia, thank you so much for bringing in your lunch today to showcase some of the other foods that we are eating and kind of where they come from. Yeah. Did you guys learn about where 
your food comes from and the story of food today? Yeah? So when you go home tonight and you're eating dinner, I want you guys to quiz your parents, mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever's there with you. I want you to quiz them about where their food comes from.